Hi everyone, my name is Alfonso Pulido and while I'm to hunting, I thought I wanted to share with you a little tutorial on depth sculpting for financial models. I have found myself many times watching YouTube videos that state the maximum depth size you will get from a project is the present value of its cash flows available for that service. You will only need a cash flow and a discount rate to come up with the maximum amount of debt a project can repay. Well, this is quite right. Term sheets from lenders will incorporate a few other parameters you'll have to deal with. Things like debt service cover ratio, gearing and tenor. These are all basic parameters you'll have to deal with from the very beginning when building your model. As you can imagine, introducing all these inputs into your model will require some sort of optimization to come up with the maximum amount of debt. In my next video, you will learn how to optimize your model and how to automate it, the routine using Visual Basic. Okay then, let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start uh, defining our parameters. We'll start with the term, the gearing. So the term would be seven years and gearing would be 80%. Then we will need our minimum that service cover ratio say 1.2 times and the interest rate all in that will encompass all different charges and commissions the lender would want to charge us so a little bit of formatting here and we are ready so let's set up the period counter from 0 to the 10th period and then a period flag so well my excel is in spanish but the, it's just a logical operator and so when the period counter is below the term and it's different to zero, like that, it will deliver a one. All the spread across. Oops, I got it the other way around. I meant mine and ours. That's it, the spread across, and oh, here we are. Okay, so we will continue with the cash flow profile of our project. So our project could be negative minus 3000 in the initial period, and the first period could be negative. Uh, 3,500 and then it would start at a thousand and increase in 200 every year so not to have a flat profile which would be a little boring so what would it be our capital requirement it's pretty easy is the minimum of our cash flow profile or zero so and then our cash flow available to serve that uh, capital requirement to be funded would be the, the opposite, would be the maximum between zero and our cash flow profile. Oops, ah, no. Okay, spread across. So far, so easy. Okay, so let's uh, gonna build our senior debt. It's a balance sheet item, so we'll have a beginning of period and end of period. Oops, uh, bold. So beginning of period, and then our items would be the drawdowns.
intersect root interspade following our gearing as defined in our inputs and then our principal repayments all in all that would give us our end of period uh, balance so let's start our draw drawdown would be our capital requirement am I gonna use the flag well no not really okay let's let's leave it as he is I was wondering leaving uh, introducing a construction versus operations flag but well not needed uh, well, it, it would only complicate things so intersect root it would be the addition uh, of the opening balance with the drawdowns times the all-in interest rate which will be uh, I didn't define it just 5% spread across and that would be it so our beginning of period would be the end of period from the previous period and our end of period would be the sum of all the items above. A little bit of formatting here. That's right. Oh, forgot to, to apply the gearing to the drawdowns because the bank is not gonna lend us a uh, 100% of our capital requirements, but just a portion of it. This time it's going to be 80%. That's a limitation they'll impose on our lending. And the interest paid will follow the same logic. They will only lend us. Oh, signs are the other way around. Be very wary of the of the signs. Uh, Interest accrued is an inflow to the project as well as drawdown, which I'll correct in a minute. An interest paid is a cash outflow to the project because we'll have to to pay that, and it will represent the cash uh, uh, the cash going out of our our project. So the debt service coverage ratio, following. will be our cash flows available for debt service divided by the debt service which by definition in this the interest paid and the principal repayment all the spread across mm. uh -oh, something went wrong here ah oh, well Let's continue. I'll fix that up later. So our repayments are gonna be the cash available for debt service divided by our debt service cover ratio minus the interest paid. Again, sign. should be negative okay but while well, I'm just putting that let's make the interest paid not being actually paid throughout construction because the project won't have any cash available so it will be as easy as 
doing that. So no interest paid is accrued but not paid throughout construction. And construction is whenever you've got a capital requirement while you are paying whoever is constructing for you. That's gonna be the other way around. A couple of decimal places and here you are. 120 all periods. Just a little bit of formatting. If error, just a state not available. Looks nicer this way. Uh, something is not quite right here because it's escalating a lot. Ah, I forgot to correct the sign. I told you before, but I didn't. So drawdowns are cash inflows to the project because uh, it's money that the project is receiving. So have to state correctly the signs. Well, as you see, well the the, the workings are are working <laughs> properly, but the, it's not is getting to a point in which the loan is overpaid. So let's limit the amount of money you can repay, which will be the maximum of the balance, here it is. So pretty easy. As you can see the debt is not quite uh, streamlined because the last period doesn't come up with a 1.2% uh, coverage ratio. So let's find out how much debt service ratio can this project with can this project hold is gonna be something around 1.33 34 maybe no a little bit high yeah that's it 134 which is substantially above the initial 120 so then the Depth is optimized to the above parameters, but we cannot optimize this uh, in a routine, an automatic routine. I'll show you in my next video. Uh, it's gonna be quite easy, no, no worries. But I'll be using uh, a couple of uh, extra uh, lines in Visual Basic to help us uh, automate the, the whole process. Uh, well, as usual, if you just like the video please uh, give me a thumbs up and share it um, uh, across LinkedIn uh, if you want the, this very basic um, model just reach me and I'll happy to, to send you the, this very same Excel file so okay thank you very much for watching see you in the next video